A stroke is the brain injury that occurs when you suddenly disrupt the blood flow to the brain. The most common way is there's a blood clot that blocks off the flow so that the brain tissue doesn't get oxygen uh, from the blood. The other way is the blood vessel can actually rupture so there's bleeding into the brain. A stroke is a very common condition. In fact, uh, over 750,000 people have a stroke in the United States each year, and it's the third leading cause of death and the number one cause of adult disability. The common cause of stroke in older individuals is hardening of the arteries. That can cause blood vessels to rupture for bleeding strokes, or it can make the vessel surface sticky so a blood clot can form and block off the blood flow. One of the more common causes in young people is a tear in a blood vessel, which we call a dissection. So sometimes if there's been trauma to the neck, it can cause a tear, which can block off the blood flow. Other things that can happen in younger patients are trouble with the heart. They can have a blood clot form on an abnormal heart valve, which can break loose and go to the brain. The number one risk factor for stroke is high blood pressure. Other risk factors for stroke include diabetes, smoking, high cholesterol, heart disease, and some of the non-treatable risk factors are age and then gender. As we said, men tend to have more strokes, uh, particularly in their, their 40s, 50s, and 60s. Uh, race, uh, African Americans have a higher incidence of stroke than Caucasians. Preventing stroke, one of the important things to do is to identify the risk factors. High blood pressure, elevated cholesterol, smoking, lack of exercise, and try to intervene on those risk factors. Then we also use medications. In particular, we use medicines that make the blood less sticky. We often use medications to keep the cholesterol under control. What we've learned is that getting the cholesterol down very low is helpful not only for preventing heart attacks, but also is very helpful for preventing stroke. We have lots of treatment options for stroke. That's the good news. The bad news is that we have to start them very quickly after the onset of symptoms. The standard treatment that we've had for many years is a drug called TPA, which is a clot buster, which can dissolve the blood clot. And we are now using this medication up to four and a half hours after symptom onset. The other option we have is to take the patient into what we call the cath uh, angiogram suite, where a small tube is placed in a blood vessel in the leg. The tube goes up into the brain, and we can physically try to remove the clot with a mechanical device. We can also use clot dissolving medicines directly into the clot with that technique. The stroke symptoms are complicated because they depend on what part of the brain has had the disrupted blood flow. If it affects the left side of the brain, typically what you'll see is weakness on the right side of the body, usually involving primarily the arm and the face, and difficulty speaking. The right side of the brain can be even more complicated because instead of the speaking problem, the patient usually has some confusion. Oftentimes when the patient is having a stroke, they may not be able to call 911, either because they don't realize it or because they're not able to talk. And that's why it's critical that people know the warning signs. The other symptoms that can occur is loss of vision. Not the total vision, but usually just vision on one half of the world. The other thing that can happen with strokes towards the back of the brain is a lack of coordination. So there's multiple different symptoms that have to be considered but one of the things that's unique about stroke symptoms is they come on all of a sudden. So when that blood clot blocks off the flow, the patient goes from normal to having a stroke disability instantly. So there's lots going on with stroke research. Uh, one of the things that we're most excited about here at Stanford is new imaging techniques that allow us to see the stroke as it's happening. We can image the stroke and see how much of the brain has been irreversibly injured and how much is salvageable. And sometimes we'll see a patient even at eight or 10 hours that has a considerable amount of salvageable tissue. So we can intervene with our treatments later than we might have otherwise. So being able to image the stroke as it's happening is a major advance and something that we're continuing to work on.